Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Understanding and Interpreting Equations. This is part one. Another title that would be just as good would be What is an Equation? This is part one. So here in this batch of lessons, the big picture is we're going to be doing a lot of multiplication problems, building your multiplication skills. So we'll be doing multiplying two digits times one digit, and two digits times three digits, and so on, learning how to multiply larger and larger numbers. But right here in the beginning, before we get into that, we want to talk about the idea of what is an equation and understanding uh, equations, because in lots of equations that we use, Throughout math, we have multiplication in almost every equation that we have. And I could give you many, many examples, but I don't want to get too far ahead of where we are. But just trust me, when we start learning more and more math, multiplication comes into almost every equation that, you know, that we use in real life. So here in the beginning of the multiplication sequence, we want to talk about what is an equation. It has a fancy sounding name, equation. It sounds so hard, but trust me, it's not hard. In fact, you already kind of know what an equation is. And let me give you a simple example of an equation, but not a math equation. Let's just talk about an everyday equation. My name is Jason. Jason is some sounds that come out of my mouth and they go to you and they go in your ears and you hear it as Jason, right? Jason means me, right? This thing here is a marker. It has a, a word, we call it a label, it's called marker. When I say marker, you know in your mind that it means this thing. All right, so that's kind of like an equation. When I tell you Jason goes to the store, you don't need to see me go to the store. You know that Jason means me, right? You know that marker means this. You know that paper means this. And so when we have, I guess what I'm trying to do is draw the parallel that equations are things that have equal signs in them. Think about the word equation. It means something that has an equal sign. E equal sign, equation. They mean some, it means that something is equal. So the, the word Jason equals me, but you know that, that I'm not actually equal to, to the word. You just know that the word is like a, it's like a placeholder. It's like a, it's like a box. And you can put the description of me inside the box that we call Jason. So every time we say Jason, you know, it talks about me. So equations in math are the same way. We have labels and the labels are just equal to something. Uh, and then we can calculate what that thing is equal to. And then we can say that the label is equal to the answer, right? So let's, I think going to be, it's going to be a lot easier if we can just talk about a real example. So let's talk about our first example. It says Carter opened four bags of gummy worms and put them all into a bowl. If there were five gummy worms in each bag, how many gummy worms are there in the bowl? So Carter here has four bags, bag number one, bag number two, bag number three, bag number four. Every one of those bags has five gummy worms. So you have five here, five in this bag, five in this bag, five in this bag. We can add them all up, but we know that when we have groups like that and so many things in each group, it's the same as multiplication. And we've already done multiplication problems like that. So what's the difference here? Here is because we want to form our first equation. Now, the thing you need to know about equations is the answer can be any letter of the alphabet. Usually we don't use words uh, to, to, to represent things in equations, we just use letters. So you can use X, or you can use Y, or you can use Z. You can use W, or K, or Q, or L, or M. I mean, you can use anything. You can even use Greek letters in equations. I mean, we have all kinds of things we can use in equations. But the point is, it doesn't matter what the letter is, it just matters that you use the same letter everywhere you know, to represent the same thing. So in this case, we have a multiplication problem. Four bags times five items in each bag. So if we want to know how many gummy worms this person really has, we know that there are four bags. And every one of these bags has five gummy worms. So it's bag number one, bag number two, bag number three, bag number four. Five, 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 five. That's four bags times five. And so we know the answer is 20, but let's not write it down just yet. What we're going to do here is we're going to say that that calculation four times five we're going to put a label on it. Just like Jason is a label for me, we're gonna put a label on this. We can use A or B or X or Y or W. I don't care what you use. We can pick any letter you want. In this case, let's use the letter H, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the answer to this problem, we're gonna call it H. We could call it G for gummy worms if you want to, but let's just use H. Right? And whatever eight, whatever the answer to four times five is, is going to be some number and it's going to be like put inside of the label H. You can think of H being like a box and it holds an answer. 
that box is called the box H. Inside that box is the answer, right? So here we say the answer H is equal to four times five. And so we now know from our multiplication tables, four times five is 20. So we say that H is equal to 20. And I can circle this 20 what? Gummy uh, worms. All right, now you might look at this and say, well, this is a really easy problem. We've done problems like this you know, uh, before. It was just a single step, four times five. Why are we doing this now? It's because the idea of an equation that you can come up with the calculation and you give it a label that we call uh, a variable. This, this uh, letter here is a letter of the alphabet. We call it a variable. And a variable is just a label. Like Jason's a label. Pen is a label, paper's a label, lights are a label, board is a label, they're all labels. So in math, we have labels too, we call them variables. In fact, we can just write that down. We can say that this thing is called a variable. Right, and the entire thing here is called an equation. So I can like put this here and call it equation. So don't let this word scare you. The word equation just means you have an equal sign, that's it. And the word variable just means you have a letter. And all it means is whatever you calculate here, it gets assigned to the variable or the letter that we call H. That's the only point of this lesson, to get you used to seeing letters mixed in with your numbers. And that's the only thing. Think about those letters, those variables being labels. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. It says, uh, Corrine gets two points each time she makes a goal. She's playing sports. If she makes 11 goals, how many points will she get? So let's come up with some letter to represent how many points she's going to get. And the answer to the calculation is just gonna be put into that variable, that label, and we can pick any letter we want. But let's pick the, uh, let's pick the letter um, uh, K. It could be A, it could be B, it could be X. It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose something to represent the number of points. I can put the letter P for the number of points here. And we said that she gets two points every time she makes a, a goal and she makes 11 goals, right? So if there are 11 goals total, right? And every time she makes a goal, she earns two points, then it's 11 times two because it's Goal, 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 goal. There's 11 of these, but there's two points for every one. So it's like two, 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 two. So it's 11 groupings times two in each one. And we can say that the answer to the problem, the number of points is we're calling it a variable K. And so then we can say K is equal to 11 times two, which we know is 22. And what do we calculate the points? So literally these word problems are exactly the same kind of problems that you've done, that we've done together many, many times. The only twist is that now, instead of just writing a multiplication problem down and getting the answer, we're going to say that the answer is just equal to some letter because I want you to get used to that. We use it all the time in math to calculate all kinds of things. And I don't want to get too far ahead, but you're just going to have to trust me, letters and numbers that go together like peanut butter and jelly in math. You will see them all the time. So let's just kind of get used to it together. That's all we're doing in this problem or in this lesson. All right, problem number three says, Michael makes $7 each time he vacuums the house. If he vacuumed six times last uh, month, how, many mo how much money did he make? So we're trying to calculate how much money he would make. Now we can use the letter A or B or C. We could use the letter M for money, that'd be fine. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna use the letter uh, D. And I'm only using these different letters. I could use the same letter all the time, but I'm using these letters to be different to show you it doesn't matter what letter you pick. The letter doesn't matter. The idea is what matters. So uh, D could be for dollars, right? And where we're going to be talking about how many dollars this person make, uh, uh, makes. It says he makes $7 every time he vacuums the house and he vacuums six times. So $7 every time, but he does it six times. So seven times six is what you're trying to do because you have like six groupings of seven times each time. So it's like he vacuums six times Time number one, time number two, three, four, five, six, and every time he did $7, $7, $7, $7, $7, and what we're doing by multiplying is we're adding up all of those dollars, six groupings of seven. And you know that uh, seven times six is 42, so the D is equal to $42. All right, D is equal to $42. 
right? Notice that in step one, we wrote down the equation that d was equal to seven times six. In the second step, we did the math and we said that d was then equal to $42. In the first step, we wrote down the equation. K was 11 times two. In the second step, we wrote down the right-hand side was 22 so that K was 22. So as you do your math and you go down the page, the letters stay in the same place and they represent what's on the other side of the equal sign and you can go ahead and do the multiplication on the other side to get down to the answer. All right, four, number problem number four. It says, uh, Styla ran eight laps around the track for every nine days. How many laps did she run? Uh, I mean, let me repeat that. Uh, Styla ran uh, eight laps around the track every day for nine days. Every day for nine days. How many laps did she run? Now, we can use any letter that we want. X, Y, A, B, whatever. It doesn't matter. But let's use the variable uh, Y. So we're going to say that Y is going to represent how many times she ran around this track. It says that we ran eight laps every day for nine days. So it has to be we have nine days, right? And then we're going to multiply that times eight. Or you can think of it as eight times nine. It's exactly the same answer. Nine days times eight laps every one of those days. So, so day number one, day number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine days. Every day I did eight, right? So I have eight laps in the first day, eight laps in the second day, eight laps in the third day. So nine times eight, nine groupings, each having eight, nine times eight is 72. So we say that Y is 72. And what have we calculated? 72 laps. Because on day one, she did uh, eight. And day two, she did eight. And day three, she did eight. Nine times eight means she did 72 laps altogether. All right, here's our last problem, problem number five. It says there are three teams in gym class. If each team has six members, how many people are in gym class in all? So we're trying to find out how many people. Again, we can use A or B or W or X. It doesn't matter. We're going to use, in this case, we're going to use the variable, the letter W. We're going to represent, that's going to represent how many people we have. It says there's three teams and each team has six members. Three teams and every one of those teams has six members. So it's three groupings, six and six and six, three groupings times six in each group is what? 18, right? 18, and we say W then is equal to 18, and we're trying to say 18 people. All right, so W is representing how many people are in the class, and the answer is 18. So in this lesson, we have basically are solving problems that are very simple. They're simple multiplication problems, but that's not the point of the lesson. The point of the lesson is to understand what an equation is, that you can have a letter and a number in the same, in the same mathematical thing that we call an equation. An equation is any kind of math object that has an equal sign. That's why it's called an equation, equals, equation. So they have to be equal. And we also talked about the idea that these letters that we have, we're using them as kind of like labels, like names. So we can use any letter we want, it's just a placeholder, it's just a name. So here in the beginning, we didn't know what W was equal to, but we knew that whatever it was, it had to be three times six. In the second step, we actually found out what three times six was, and so now we know that W is equal to 18. So you see, here we know that W is equal to three times six, but that's exactly the same thing as saying that W is equal to 18. Here we're saying that K is 11 times two. The variable K is equal to 11 times two, but that's the same thing as saying K is equal to 22 because the left and the right sign are equal. If they're equal, then these steps will represent the same thing for W and the right-hand sides are equal because we know that three times six is 18. So all I'm trying to get you to do is get comfortable with the idea of seeing letters and numbers together. We call that an equation, and this lesson was on understanding and interpreting what an equation actually is. So I'd like you to go through these again, make sure you understand what I'm getting at. Try to understand these letters, these variables, as just being placeholders. They're labels. That's all they are, labels for our answer. And then follow me on to part two. We'll get a little bit more practice with the concept of what is an equation.